Good evening, everyone. Um, happy New Year. Start our 2023 um, school committee meetings. Today is you. All right. We don't judge them. You know what I do. But it's not letting me. Start. We're just telling you. There we go. Okay. Today is Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. This is a meeting of the Gloucester School Committee. We are meeting at Gloucester High School Library at 32 Leslie O. Johnson Road. The time is 6 p.m. Um, consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted by remote participation. The public may not physically attend this meeting. But every effort will be made to allow the public to view and listen to the meeting in real time and participate when necessary. Um, I will state that the mission for Gloucester Public Schools is for all students to be successful, engaged, lifelong learners. We will do a roll call who is here. Um, Amy, would you like to start? We're going to just say who's here for the record. Sure. I'm Amy Pascaro, Assistant Superintendent. Enrollment Superintendent. Melissa Texier, Prince School Committee member. Kathy Clancy, School Committee member. Samantha Watson, School Committee member. Bill Melvin, School Committee member. Laura Weeson, School Committee member. Greg Murray, Mayor and School Committee member. Keith Mineo, School Committee member. And Maria Puglisi, Recording Secretary. Okay, so um, so the meeting's called to order and we are going into executive session and we will return to open session once that executive session is um is complete so do we have a motion to go into executive session so moved second for the i hope that we go uh, executive session for the purpose for pursuant to chapter 30a section 21a for the purposes of discussing litigation strategy second okay. we have a motion and a second we have a roll call vote please mr minio Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. Mayor Verga. Yes. Ms. Washington. Yes. Ms. Neeson. Yes. Chairperson Clancy. Yes. And Mr. Melvin. Yes. Okay. Um, so we will resume the open meeting as soon as we are done. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are going back into open session. Um, this is continuing the meeting of the Gloucester School Committee on Wednesday, January 11th, 2000. Yes. I need an exclusive to the The United States of America. Next item of business is oral communications. Uh, if you are calling in on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak. If you're watching on a computer or a device, there is a raise hand button. That you can tap or press to request to speak. Please use either of those options during all communications to be recognized to speak. Um, if anybody does want to speak, you are limited to three minutes each and shall um, identify yourself and um, yeah, that kind of summarizes what we expect. Um, is there anybody in attendance that would like to address the school committee? Marianne. Okay, um, Marianne, you are Thank welcome you. to speak. Thank you, Mary and Albert Boucher. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, I'll make this very quick. I was just at the last meeting, the subcommittee meeting, and I basically could only see um, Bill Melvin, and um, it was very difficult to hear a lot of the meeting um, or some of the meeting, and I would ask that future meetings, um, maybe if everybody's faces could be um, shown so that we can see and hear everything that you do say, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Marianne, can you hear us now? I can right now, and I see all of your faces, but the last meeting, um, I could not. It was very difficult. I could hear background talking amongst the members, and I was unable to understand what was being discussed um, with some of it. So I just um, wanted to put that out there. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Next item of item of business is recognitions. Anybody have any recognitions? I can't remember if we had a meeting okay. since this, but it feels like it's been forever. But the, someone mentioned the holidays on here. Um, that happened like, eons ago, it feels like. Um, it was both the O'Malley band and the high school band. I went with my husband and my two kids, and it was excellent. The chorus was there as well. High school chorus. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to stay for the whole thing because my kids can't hang, but it was just very cool to sort of see the O'Malley band and the high school band come together and just being able to see that progression of skill um, and just the the like pure joy on the teachers' faces. Um, they clearly love their jobs and they just do an excellent job. So kudos to them. Thank you. I just want to recognize uh, the students that we met yesterday during the uh, CBTE visit and uh, all the inspectors. I, I don't think there could be any more here. The work that the students are doing and that you're doing within the program and uh, some of the explanations that the students gave us were just outstanding. So really appreciated the opportunity to meet. I'll call picture later. A couple. You're not a oh, did I preempt you with you got some pictures? That's all right. No, I'm used to it now. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, thank you for the recognitions. I do not see um, our student um, advisory council must be busy this evening, so we will move on. The next item is the consent agenda. Does anybody have any items on the consent agenda that they would like to remove? And we'll simply include the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Are you a roll call vote, please? Mr. Miniam. Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. May further step out. Um, Ms. Watson. Yes. Ms. Wiesen. Yes. Chairperson Clancy. Yes. And Mr. Melvin. Yes. Um, with that objection, I would like to take the first item under action, which is the um, uh, Massachusetts Executive Office of Education, fiscal year 2023 skills capital facility and round of grant to Boston High School of $17,000. So, okay. Okay. Um, so I'll introduce President Brenda Waslick, who is our new uh, director of our uh, career vocational technical education programs here at Boston High. Uh, first year here, everyone got, most of them got to meet her yesterday. Um, when she gave us a fabulous tour of the programs for electrical, carpentry, automotive, and advanced manufacturing programs. And she's here to just give you a quick summary <laughs> about the skills grant, um, which you saw sort of in action yesterday. But, uh, uh, Brandis, you can just welcome, first of all, welcome Thank you. to your first school committee. Thank you yet for yesterday, which was great again to see the programs, talk to them soon, see them at work. Um, uh, and uh, just appreciate you being here. and. Uh, all the work you're doing to uh, strengthen and expand our CBT, CBT programs. Thank you. The, the grant was written for, for two shops. It was limited to that. Um, advanced manufacturing and um, carpentry under the state auspices, but the compressor technology supports more than those two programs. Um, they run the machines basically for the auto, carpentry, and advanced manufacturing programs, which is three quarters of our, of our um, vocational programs. So it's gonna be upgrading technology for the compressors and then some new equipment for the um, carpentry um, shop, bring it more up to speed um, industry standard wise. And the split is pretty much, is pretty fairly 50-50 in, in the grant. Um, I, I don't know if you have any other questions or if that's adequate. So. <laughs> you want to tell how old the compressor right now is? I'm saying uh, maybe 60 years old. I don't know. We didn't really uh, test the rust on them, but they, they're at least 60 years old. The replacements um, sorely needed. One of them had been locked out and tagged out over the pandemic because they are equipment that needs to run and it needs to run constantly and the pandemic kind of put the stops to one of them. And what happens is you buy you buy two and they back each other up to support. So every configuration has the two compressors that the work won't stop that it will support the other. 
in, in all of the areas. It also supports the um, cabinetry uh, program as well, which is conciliary to the chapter seven. Any other questions? Wonderful news. Um, I'm sorry, but just the last piece is as to reiterate that but this is uh, as we've been um, explaining and, and working on with the committee's support, you know, expanding our current programs and, and I'm sorry, strengthening our current programs and also expanding the new program. Um, part of the strengthening is modernizing the technology. Absolutely. This is one of those steps in at the first step um, that. Uh, uh, well, not the first time on strengthening, but the first step on strengthening, so you're modernizing some of the um, equipment. There's other work which um, Brenda did come back later in, in the school year to talk about in terms of strengthening the work. Um, Brenda gave you a, a short summary of that yesterday, um, strengthening the program work, the instruction uh, assessment and sort of stuff for the students. But certainly, when you were yesterday in the tour, about the certain work you do in strengthening about partnerships, certainly a lot of areas. So, pretty excited about that. And, I think one thing we got a great look at yesterday was on um, uh, just how the kids are actively engaged and learning deeply. Um, yeah. And also, I think um, folks have to witness just the incredible commitment and enthusiasm as well as expertise of our staff there. These yeah. folks are, are devoted to the work, to the students. Um, that's really good. So it's thinking. Just to, just to broaden that, um, this particular grant is completely foundational. This is where we start. Um, without this, we can't really build further. And the projects that the students were working on are notable. Um, they're the Sheds for the Veterans Project, the new school, and solar panels to um, energize the auto shop and other parts of the vocational uh, shops with solar energy. As we see on the screen now is the yesterday, um, where the students installing the first panel, solar panels on the side of the auto shop. It's been a, that's been an effort that's been in progress for a number of years, um, working alongside the DPW on that. But the students not only installing, you know, uh, uh, you know, putting up the panels, but have done, as you saw yesterday, all the electrical, you know, developing the, the electrical panel inside and all the conduit to, um, uh, to capture the electricity and then utilize it in the shop. So, they are doing the full installation um, from um, you know, on their own um, as well as, and that's really the, the approach that, that folks take is Bob Devlin, our electrical instructor likes, likes to say, he likes to keep his hands clean and the, and the students get their hands dirty, give them work, so. Um, but Bob's down there on the on the right, down here next to Jack Porter, who's the um, one of our, our you know, head auto teacher. And they're obviously talking about some of the things that are going on with the panels there. On the left, you have student Sam Rodriguez, Advanced manufacturing and RTC, ROTC student who's um, educating members um, about the high tech uh, advanced manufacturing manufacturing equipment, the name of which I cannot remember right now. CNC. Um, they, well, there's CNC lanes there. I don't know that particular machine, but they have CNC yeah. lanes and um, uh, uh, the other the other set of equipment escapes me. But there's there's several oh, different yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CNC lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm just I can't see it. Can identify on site. Yeah. And the other piece that, that that runs it, of course, is the coding students do um, to, to program um, the advanced lanes and um, then have it run. So um, just great stuff. And Sam was a great representative of, of the school and also the program. So. I have a question. Um, to either administration or Brenda. Um, so I'm hearing we're going to buy tools for the company department. Equipment. Equipment. Okay. Do we have an inventory list of equipment, the date we got it, per se, of the assets of our vocational programs? I would if, say are you aware of any? partially, because certainly all the computers <laughs> are inventory. Yeah. Um, I do not know about the equipment per se, if it's been tagged, um, maybe Jane. Grant, grant things that are purchased with grants. Are, yeah. Are so in other words, if I asked how many screwdrivers are in the auto shop, do we know? We don't know. No, no, no. We know the purchase, we know the purchases and the, the, the teachers keep that and, you know, they keep that information, but 
one of the things of you know having Brenda on board is the, the ability to uh, centralize some of that oversight. Right. So it's not just on the teacher. But I'm just thinking going forward, and I know you have so much dropped into your lab just mm -hmm. starting, and I'm not trying to make it work for you. Right. It would make sense that as a school district, and when we're talking about budget and, and programs and stuff, that we would actually know what's there, right? Like we inventory our kitchens, we should be inventory in our vocational program um, assets as well. Yeah. Um, just so that we have an idea, the last time we bought hammers was in 1970, right? right. Or right. whatever. Just so that we have an idea of what we're doing, the investments that are going in, um, if things get lost or need to be replaced. You know, I think that is a conversation that should be ongoing with the BNF to keep vocational programming at our you know the forefront of us yeah you know like we do other departments so it would be interesting if we could start doing something like that or at least talk about starting to do something part of the vision and part of the, the the modernization of those shops for example in carpentry and electrical and um auto we're getting storage you saw some of those in electrical that can be locked up Right. So then the students, when it's time to clean up, are responsible for returning the amount of tools, as it were, to maintain that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them, and, and they're not um, tools that can be used in perpetuity either, you know, so right. they, they have a, a shelf life, even though it may be longer. But part of the plan is, you know, Snap-on has these beautiful shelves where you have a full set of tools for the day. You take them out from your job and then you make sure they're back as part of your grade clean up the whole flow of the shop so that is definitely part of what we're planning to do then i see an addition to that i think something you're getting as well was, was that we can say you know, these tools haven't been bought since 1960 since 19 whatever you know or 2000 or whatever um and that then helps us you brenda and james build a case for the bnf and the committee Exactly. This is what we need. So and that we do have. We do have the per the purchasing is is we do make reference to that. And one of the, one of the reasons for that uh, that helps a lot with the Perkins grant planning to know what we've used previously, and also to make sure we're um, sharing the wealth across right. the shops and things. So so with purchasing, we do have that data to be able to look back at like when did so we purchase this that, and that right. And I mean right I exactly. Yeah, I, but I think right. we should. It's yeah. a discussion for another day. Yeah. Yes. I definitely yes. want to have it so, another day. Yes, but it, it is also that <laughs> the frameworks that you need a certain caliber of tools exactly. to to work. Mm -hmm. Right, particularly in auto, you have to have uh, up to date tools, and that's right in the frameworks. So right. that solidifies the grant process and and everything we're talking about. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just a quick comment on. I noticed the three, like the three D printers that you have, and brand called Maker Bot. I mean, um, you know, if you think about tech, and I'm only, I'm only this is more comment than anything else, and only because I'm in the manufacturing world. That you know, you think old time stuff is CNC machining. That's how they used to make parts, CNC machining. Oh. Now they've gone to three uh, D printing. Yeah. Next is laser printing. That's three times faster than three D printing. Yeah. Um, do you find that more kids are getting <laughs> interested in, you know, the 3D printing aspect of it? And I realize it's kind of a program that, you know, introduces kids to these technologies, but the real trick is going to be to stay, you know, 100 to 25 years from now, there might not be CNC machines. Everything might be laser printed. You know, yeah. I can show you pictures of huge jet engine parts that are basically laser printed or 3D printed versus, the old days of putting them on a spindle, CNC machining them for five days to produce your part. So, I mean, I, not, not so much. A, I like to hear some feedback just on, mm -hmm. hey, you know, do the kids recognize that? That, hey, this is the future right here in 3D printing and laser printing. You're, ta you're talking about two different things. You're talking about the output devices. Yeah. And we also have the input devices where they're designing. And that software is state of the art, brand new. And where, the, where you take them out to is, it could be the 3D printer. It's the same basis in the right. software. It's the SolidWorks and the Mastercam. Right. And the kids all have access to, the, to those pieces of software. Good. And they could take it to the CNC machine, or they can take it out to the 3D printer, or to the laser engraver, et cetera. 
So, so the basis, the foundation is the same. It's just the output devices yeah. that, and technically the output devices, except for the mechanical breakdowns, yeah, yeah, yeah. are basically a lot simpler for training and to use than it is to get that software. Right. So. Very interesting. And, and there are a few different entry points to, to, to that as well. So we, we do have the advanced manufacturing program, but we also have our engineering classes, including a class in uh, engineering, manufacturing, and design, where they actually learn about uh, some of the benefits of the different processes right. of, of you know, 3D printing versus milling. And they one of the things students in that class determine is what might be if I were to go beyond the prototype, right, of this costing out what would be the best way of mass manufacturing this particular right. device that they've created say it's um, something to amplify the sound in your cell phone sure. for example students are designing and they they figure out what what are some of the best ways of doing that so there's the advanced manufacturing class that we got to see and then we have our engineering classes as well there are different kind of entry points to some of the same design and the same technology but different Ways of getting into it. Very interesting stuff. And conversation, like Melissa said, conversation for another day, but just kind of expand on that to let kids know hey, you know, first you're going to find the right technology to make the part that you do. You know, what's the most cost effective, what's the most time sensitive, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. A lot of people don't even think about that. But that is a part of the theory. technology. That, that's state of the art. Yeah. The output devices. Yeah. Well, um, I just wanted to say one thing. I'm sure we would love to hear a lot more about you and about the program, which will happen at a different meeting. Because um, every year we get a report on the vocations program. So it's great that you've been you're here for us to accept. I think there are three grants here on our agenda for the vocational program. So we'll do that while you're here. And we look forward to hearing more from you and asking you even more questions because sure. we find that this is a great forum for the community to also get informed about what's happening at Foster High School. Absolutely. Anytime. Okay, so um I move that we accept <laughs> the Massachusetts Executive Office of Education fiscal year 2023 skills capital facility and round two grant to Gloucester High School in the amount of $117,000. Discussion. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Minio? Yes. Ms. Prince? Yes. Mayor Varga? Yes. Ms. Watson? Yes. Ms. Wieson? Yes. Jefferson Clancy? Yes. And Mr. Melvin? Yes. And the next grant, um, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next grant is from the Gloucester Education Foundation in the amount of $15,000 to the Gloucester High School Vocational Program. And it is for the same, um, going to the same compressor we just heard about. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call vote for you. Mr. Minio? Yes. Ms. Prince? Yes. Mayor Berta? Yes. Ms. Watson? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Jefferson Clancy? Yes. And Mr. Melton? Yes. Okay. And um, the third grant is Gloucester Education Foundation grant in the amount of $50,000 to the Gloucester High School Automotive Technology Program. Um, Good move. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I would just say this is um, a continuation of one law and line law of generosity to um, have our auto tech program be able to service more kids, which has been terrific. For many years. Yeah. Um, if, 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 if your allowance, so um, this uh, funding for this is the fourth year now for for Warren Law, uh, for the Line Law Group. Um, in this very generous donation to EF, it allows us to um, have a full second teacher in um, the automotive, automotive um, you know, program who has a name. It's Bud Macy, right? Yeah. And I'd love James to talk a little bit about um, your impressions of, of the way Bud approaches work and, and works with students. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And folks got to see a little bit of this yesterday and, you know, uh, got to think about it in action a little bit, but um, on a, you know, sort of Regular day of, of, of you know observations in the uh, auto shop. One of the you know really 
uh, cool things that I get to see is both Jack and Bud teaching a group of students uh, in a way that fully uh, realizes the, 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 the basis of instruction in the school across the curriculum, right? So from a math teacher to what's going on in the shops. And that's the, the culturally responsive teaching model that I, I, I've talked about before. So you'll see uh, Bud talking about a, you know, a vision of say the, the you, you got to see the, the car on its side that they're gonna you put the floor in, right? Uh, uh, quite a corroded old vehicle and you know so it, you know so the, the igniting activity is the vision of how each student has a role in bringing that to you know a restoration right and then on a given day of instruction he's going to you know, chunk some material into 10 or 15 minutes of like here's what we're going to be doing today right so here's the instruction here's the skill that this small group of students will be learning then he's uh, they're processing that by by doing it themselves under his supervision. Right, they're taking they, what that instruction and then putting it into action um, under, like I said, under his supervision. And then in the wrap up, there's what did you learn today? What are the takeaways? How far did you get? What what did you run into that were problems that maybe you didn't anticipate going in? What do we need to do and pick up tomorrow? What might you need to learn to take it to the next step? And that, you know, one of the, the cool things that I get to see is see that kind of instruction of what it looks like in the auto shop, what it looks like in the math, and so on. And the fact that we have uh, Bud in the shop with Jack allows for more of that kind of individualized teaching, right? That kind of that, that chunk of material, more students are able to be supervised and actively processing and working on the, the cool projects that, that you got to see. Um, and uh, this really hit me. Um, and really last year uh, hit me uh, so very clearly um, when I was doing those observations with that kind of simultaneous teaching. It also allows us to have more freshmen in, in you know, that, that intro class, right? We have more students in the gateway. Uh, as you know, it's limited to 15 students per instructor. So we get more uh, students at the door. That's, that's obvious, but the less obvious is allowing this to fully realized vision of the the um, brain-based culturally responsive teaching that Bud's awesome at it. Mm -hmm. we, we really appreciate the grant for that reason. Among other reasons. And I just wanted to add that whenever I have the opportunity to be in the school, I'm always looking to say, well, is that an impactful teacher? And both those instructors are impactful people. You can tell that the kids are tuned into what they're saying and they're enthusiastic about what they're putting out there. I, I'm always impressed by that. Roll call up, please. Mr. Minion. Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. Ms. Berga. Yes. Ms. Watson. Yes. Ms. Wieson. Yes. Chairperson Clancy. Yes. And Mr. Melvin. Yes. Okay. Excellent grants to accept the ticket. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to stay. <laughs> okay, um, we will move on to deliberations on education issues and superintendent's report. Um, hello, um, let me just jump in to all, uh, start things off with a few just updates. Um, already covered one of them was. So tonight, a uh, few updates from me, then we'll go uh, aim past our early presentation with James Cook about the NEAS accreditation of the high school, renewal of the NEAS accreditation at the high school. Uh, I'll give you a budget planning update, FY 2024, and then a few playground updates. We'll have two updates, one on installation of the playground, but also a proposed relocation of the current memorial um, uh, of, that is at the playground. Okay, so we'll jump in here. Um, I did that one. Excellent. So, just wanted to highlight uh, the recent retirements of two uh, longtime elementary school secretaries. Um, uh, I'm going to skip ahead of this one. Kathy Doe, who was a longtime secretary at uh, East Foster um, and uh, a right hand person of Amy Pascrell when she was principal there, um, retired in September. 
And I don't think we, we recognized at that point. We did here. They did a lot. Um, yes. But just a, a few things about um, uh, Kathy was that uh, she was with us for 28 years, started as a new supervisor, probably then a yard lady, perhaps. <laughs> that was much <laughs> was not back then, uh, at West Parish. Um, became uh, secretary of West Parish and the Beeman and finally landed at her home, which, which is East Gloucester, um, and was at East Gloucester for- Seven years. For seven years, okay. Um, but she as- She told me she would come for two. Boom. So she was there for your whole, so your whole right? Yeah. There you go. Um, and also was very really instrumental in the coordination of the nature's classroom. Uh, it yes. says here, uh, we considered her the, uh, the Mary Poppins, is that right? Of yes. East Gloucester. Um, but, but really, um, she's retired, um, really, um, doing a fair bit of traveling now, but also spending quite a bit of time with her family and her grandchildren going forward, mostly, mostly locally. So I want to just acknowledge Kathy. Um, and then, then, just last week, um, Lois Lane from West Parish um, uh, retired uh, on the 6th. And um, Lois was in the district for more than 22 years, all at West Parish. She started there as a para um, and then was a secretary for just over 19, year, 19 years. And as you can see, the law celebrating Lois uh, last week and on Friday, um, what you can see around her neck here, and also what the kids are putting on here, is each uh, grade, each student rather, put a link of a paper chain together. And then hour by hour, or last Friday, the whole grade would come down and bestow their paper chain with all their individual links um, uh, uh, onto Lois, literally onto Lois. Um, and so you see her they're wrapped up and this is probably the fifth graders here. Um, and so each gave her a, a message. And I was there, I happened to stop by as well. And Happen on purpose to say thank you to Lois. Um, but she was consoling two students who were crying. They weren't crying um, for any other reason other than she was needed. And as she said, one of them is a crier, one's definitely not a crier, but they were both crying. Um, and, and she assured them, as she assured Lena and others, including myself, that she's going to be back. Lena's already signed her up for four days of substituting after a nice trip to West Point. So, um, and then Lo Lois, we love you in the upper right hand corner. Um, that's the, the PTA does a great job. These are yard cards. And, and every once in a while, you see um, some pop up at West Barracks. So it's a particularly big yard card for Lois. But just wanted to highlight those two. Um, and, 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 and one, wonderful people, but two, they themselves, both of them, but all our school secretaries you know, are really a linchpin in our school and our school communities. You know, they are, um, and, as the chain is purposeful. Um, you know, they uh, they said Lois held held them together, you know, and so and that happens all over our schools with our school secretaries. I just wanted to um, acknowledge that, take the time to also acknowledge Kath too, um, but just really highlight um, what an important role every single day our school secretaries play um, in our lives, our communities, and, and just uh, this this really so much good to in our schools. So that's one thing more Yeah. Um... My, my kids came home uh, that day and, and had a lot of nice things to say about Lois and that they were gonna miss her. And judging by my kids, they, they, they said, oh, all the kids were really gonna miss her. Yeah. So, and she, she was front facing, you know, at the, at the door, you know, all the kids knew her and yeah, it's gonna be a big transition for them. Yeah. Y'all came home sweating because of the dance party they had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, it's a very big party. <laughs> so, and also, then we welcome Darlene Pistello, who replaced Lois and the Tarabina, who replaced Kathy. You know, and, and they're going to be obviously a big picture in those schools as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, the other thing is, um, we have now completed the new website launches for all schools. Oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> so, they are uh, a lot easier to. Uh, find information to navigate to, to use on a mobile device. They're, they're very uh, friendly to phones, that sort of thing. Um, much easier to update. Um, uh, a variety of folks can, can update them, and we're working on that. Um, have some similar structures. I'm sorry, I'm just showing you sort of the header of each one. Um, Bet, Bet's West Parish and Foster Preschool, and then O'Malley and Foster High. Um, this is, I would say, this is, this is a huge improvement for what we have, okay? 
Um, at the same time, it's they're sort of um, a step in the right direction. They're not the end goal. Um, the end goal will be probably uh, much more robust in maybe a couple of years. Um, and and, and be, these are all built on Google Sites, which is very helpful and very uh, easy to update and, and, uh, and very mobile, um, integrated with, with mobile devices. Um, and, and so it's a real, real strong step in the right direction. Um, and they are, and it also allows us to, um, you know, link, link them in a way where we're updating um, a file or a document or um, a history or that sort of thing in one place. And it's, and it's um, all, you know, getting updated in multiple places. So that helps as well. Um, yeah. So a, a strong improvement um, is the second right direction. Are they standalone sites, Ben, or are they just everything's picked up off the main? Block? No. So the challenge with um, there are standalone sites, and uh, even more so, if, you know, the, for example, the, the the first one we did, which was the district website, had multiple standalone sites that appear as one, but the back end is not one. And that's one of the, that's one of the limitations yeah. because with Google, the access in terms of updating. It, it, and how you give access is pretty limited. Right. And of course, we want multiple people to be able to update it because um, we don't have staff to do one for all, all of them. In order to have that, those privileges, you do have to sort of nest separate sites. Right. So that, that's one of the challenges that that then plays out. It's good for updating and being current and managing a site. It's bad for things like search, for example. And that's why the search functions aren't, aren't don't, um, Operate across all sites or even the district site. Is that my yeah. clear about that? That's exactly yeah. What I, was asking. Yeah. Yeah. I just have one small uh, suggestion for all of the schools is under staff directory or even on like the very front page, have a place where it says who you email for attendance. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, because I this is something I went through with the new changeover from Lois to Darlene, right? So there wasn't, I didn't know. The email address, and I would imagine that that's becoming probably cumbersome for the school to sort of have to make all those phone calls and follow up. Um, so to just have a, a either be like attendance at the school or have, yeah, I think it might just help streamline the process of the parents, especially again in the school back end. Because I don't do this ever. I don't have a child in school when I when I yeah. My husband just kept saying, "There's no just attendance at right." So so I email. So email the email or secretary email. I don't know what they call me. But do we accept emails for attendance? Yeah, that's what I do. Yes. Great. Great. That's very helpful. I will hand it over to Amy and James, and they will um, give an update and me ask accreditation, and then uh, I'll step back to the other pieces. Computer glitch here. We're getting there. Yeah, I'll share it. Why don't you start uh, skimming in the middle? It's me, I'll share it. Oh. 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, no worries. Ben, we'll pull it up. Um, what you're going to see is a new design for a slideshow that's Gloucester specific. I'm going to show that off for a minute. Um, I got a little carried away. Um, I'm going to give Grant Harris the credit for the fishman on the front. It's his drawing. Thank you, which reminds me, I, I, I have that's to interrupt you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Grant Harris, through legendary websites. Okay. The schools have also helped out a ton, but he, in terms of design, in terms of push, in terms of leadership, in terms of getting done. And I would be really remiss if I didn't, didn't acknowledge that. So sorry Thank about you. it. He also used his illustration skills to yeah. create the icon that's here yeah. and on our website, on the yeah. high school's website. He drew that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. His wow. work is unbelievable. Yeah. And if He's you really look at the field house as well, the center icon wow. in, in the field house is yeah. Grant's. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. give a little credit for that. Um, but I stole his uh, image and made a slideshow. So there you go. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so this is the NIAS presentation. Um, they're simple, you can go ahead. Uh, James is gonna start off with talking about the process and then I get to talk about all the good stuff they said about us. Thank you, Amy, for that up. And so it's a long process, as you all know, because we've been, I've been given reports for a very long time, but all uh, seven years that I've been principal of Gloucester High School. So um, way back in, uh, uh, we, uh, Way back in 2018, we had uh, completed the self-reflection report. That report took a couple of years to create. So really, it began as soon as I became principal of Gloucester High School. As the um, uh, program leader for the English department, I was already working on elements uh, specific to English of the, the NIAS report. Um, so this self-reflection report was, was part of a new design for 2020, what NIAS calls their Vision 2020. And instead of having one giant report, and then after 10 years, having a um, team come and evaluate the report and talk to people and do all these things and then give a rating, they designed a couple, three steps so that you could work on things before the accreditation report. So the first thing you would do is reflect on, okay, where are we in the standards, in the ASK standards? Uh, how, how are we doing? How's our progress? Um, and then they would send a small team of folks um, made up of a uh, representative from the ASK as well as uh, area educators. Um, the principals give folks time off to go visit schools and uh, read the reports and uh, go into classrooms and talk to students and um, look at student presentations. So that happened in the collaborative conference visit in October of 2018. Um, and then they gave us their report, the collaborative conference report in February of 2019. The collaborative conference visit um, coincided um, pretty closely with the process that we underwent with um, uh, another organization um, that through DESI uh, came and also uh, gave us feedback on the school. So we had the NIASC visit, the collaborative, collaborative conference visit, um, and we had the school works visit around the same time that was, came from DESI. Um, fortunately, they said a lot of the same things, right, which was really beneficial. And uh, so when we were creating the um, school growth plan, um, in May of 2019, we were at the same time creating a sustainable improvement plan for DESI. And, we, and even though the standards are a little bit different for NIAS than they are for DESI, we made sure they were aligned. And so you might remember from some of my presentations, I would crosswalk them and show, okay, this is what we're doing for NIAS, but it's, it's similar to what we're doing and here's how the two fit together. So as far as the staff knows, they're doing one thing, right? I, you know, and I know, and I show them where we're doing two, you know, have two different people we're communicating with, but in terms of the vision for the school, it's one vision for the school. So that we put together in May of 2019. Um, we then uh, had uh, a couple of years to, during COVID, <laughs> largely, to put this plan into action, which we did, despite all the other things we were dealing with. Um, and then created the reflective summary report. So this is a longer report um, that um, now says 
with this growth plan, what have we been able to do with the feedback from the collaborative conference visit? Um, what have we been able to get done? We share that with NEASC in this big reflective summary report that the faculty uh, wrote and then approved by the September of 2021. And then in October of 2021, a uh, visiting team came to Gloucester High School um, to do uh, the 10 year accreditation visit. By that point, it was almost 12 years because of some delays, as you might expect, but we still call it the, ten, the decennial review. Um, and what Amy will be showing is um, <laughs> that another year, it took uh, the, the woman, uh, Allison Geary, uh, who works for NES. And we, we love working with Allison. She's super helpful for the school. It gives us great feedback and helps us very steps. Um, she had a baby in the interim. So in addition to COVID, then we had a baby and, and that took another year. Uh, so it, it, we had about a delay in getting the report that Amy will finally be presenting tonight. And there's a lot of good news in it. Excellent, thank you. So the report um, is broken into four parts. There's two priority areas and we'll talk about that. Then there's the reflection of a student learning. James talked a little bit about that. And then there's a capacity for continuous growth. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is priority one, and that's grade-based culturally responsive instructional practices. You've heard this when we talked about um, MCAS and how, how we're moving forward in, at high school. We talked about professional development. We, you've heard about this for several years now that um, we're really implementing it correctly, um, slowly and continuously. So that is really going to make um, a difference. So a priority here is the brain-based culturally res um, responsive instructional practices, and that's to support learning uh, for students for higher order thinking and to engage them and demonstrate communication, collaboration, problem solving skills, all lining up with the vision of a graduate, and also to have a written um, curriculum that supports that brain based thinking instruction. So we have several commendations. Um, we would be here all night if I read all the commendations. So I'm gonna highlight a few. Um, one, I wanna talk about um, to hear that a feeling of the majority of students that have at least one adult in the school that cares for them means a lot. To know that they, have, they can say there's at least somebody in that school they could go to, that's an outstanding accommodation. Um, and the commitment of the school and the district to do its best for students. That kind of just makes you proud just hearing that, right? Um, to have a strong foundational structures that support professional learning, um, such as PLCs, instructional leadership teams, racial equity teams, and other student growth teams. That's something that we don't see in every high school. So it's tremendous that it's here. <laughs> there are a few other, many other accommodations, but I'll let you read through. Sorry. <laughs> the working All right. Priority two um, is to increase social emotional learning. And if I, if we remember back to uh, James's discussion about um, professional development, he uh, talked about those two buckets. It was that instructional and social emotional. And that's carried out throughout. So it's really outstanding to see that. Um, and that's to promote self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, responsible um, skills and social awareness, for student wellness, um, attendance, transition from the middle school, and equity and inclusion. So this is all like really important work that they do on a continuous basis. Um, so for this, they, we have two slides full of commendations, but I'll highlight um, just a few from each. Um, the school-wide school focus on the social and emotional well-being of all students and teachers. That's outstanding. Um, the school-wide commitment to the work on equity and inclusion, including professional learning and day-to-day -day implementation strategies. So those are things that are, they do every day to make sure everybody feels belong, they belong, they're included, um, they're represented in the school. So there's a lot of work that um, is tremendous at the joint of the high school. It's work that needs to continue. We're not done, but they're go certainly going in the right track. Um, I can go to the next slide. I continue, sorry, all right. Um, so the diverse opportunities for professional development for faculty and staff, that's an outstanding thing that we have for our teachers, that they have multiple opportunities to grow their craft. Um, the elimination of barriers to school and learning for all students through the uh, creation of the DCAP and how they implement that. So to, to work, at, there's always going to be barriers, but to continuously work to take, knock down those barriers so students can engage and be part of the curriculum is what they do every day. 
and um, faculty and staff support student-led equity and inclusion initiatives. Um, we keep, you're going to keep hearing the student-led this year as well, and as we go on with our, our um, plan for ongoing improvement, it's really important the students have a, a part of their learning and they have a voice, and so it's wonderful that they, it was seen at the high school. <clears throat> our next part is the reflection of um, student learning. And this is going to look at the instructional practices, the design uh, to meet the student needs, multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate their knowledge and to share and collaborate. So that's what we're going to highlight in this section. And if you want, um, the variety of instructional strategies was noted as a strength at uh, Gloucester High School. And also to have choices provided for students to demonstrate their knowledge. So. Um, we heard a little bit more about this in the O'Malley presentation about the UDL, about has student choice. That's that's already embedded in the high school. So it's an outstanding um, thing that they're doing there and to have it so they can have multiple ways of sharing their knowledge. And also the intentional, intentional use of social emotional wellness strategies by teachers to get a greater awareness of how the students are doing. That's an outstanding thing. The capacity for continuous growth so this is talking about conceptual understanding, commitment, um, competency and capacity for growth. Um, among staff. Among staff, yes. And I didn't tell James I was gonna highlight this next one, but it is in here, go ahead. And it's certainly well-deserved. The competency of the principal's leadership, as well as other strong leaders within the building was noted as a strength of Foster High School. So um, that's you something- keep, You keep wanting to stick that out. <clears throat> yes, and so I didn't tell him I was gonna not note it. But it is well deserved. Okay. Also, the time built into the school schedule for PLC and department meetings. Um, I actually was talking with somebody from another district, and I said I worked in Gloucester, and they said, "Oh, I I met the principal that they do not work on the vision of the graduate thing." So it's wonderful what you're doing. So um, and it's noted by NIASC. So that's wonderful. Thing. Can you describe your change on the PLCs just in professional that's professional learning communities? In case mm -hmm. folks don't know either listening or in room. Sure. So the professional learning community is our uh, time we have built into the school day. So in our new you know, five-day schedule, um, teachers have um, uh, a couple days in the cycle where they, uh, well, one day where they meet as a whole department and another uh, two days where they meet in, in smaller professional learning communities to work on developing curriculum, instruction, and, and assessments together with other people. So um, for example, right now we have mid-year assessments coming up. And so they're looking at the common elements that will be in the mid-year assessments and then a planning, planning for um, after the mid-year assessments happen. Um, what do we learn from that, right? Where are students doing strong? What are some surprises? where we may need to reteach some things in the second half of the year, uh, where students didn't do quite as well. Um, in a lot of high schools, that's left up to the individual teachers. There isn't time built into the day where folks get to do that together. And especially where you get some um, you know, uh, lead teachers uh, being able to um, you know, guide that work uh, for so that their uh, expertise really gets through the whole department. And that's one of the things we've been able to do with our schedule is design the time in. And that's it's actually taking commitment also, you know, through contract negotiations and all these kinds of things that the committee has helped helped with that over the years. So we have that built in and other folks are jealous of us having that. Yes. Yeah. So those were a long list of accommodations. Um, the, this, it, these are the complete recommendations. There are four um, to continue the work of differentiating of lessons, activities, and materials in all classes to meet the needs of all students, to develop a more student-centered instructional strategy so that students are doing the majority of the thinking and, do, and doing during their classes. So when we talked about cultural responsive teaching, that's the chewing part. When we, we um, James described it in the auto class where they get to go and think about the lesson that was taught and known it. So they are encouraging us to develop more student-centered. Remember this, was from um, a couple of years ago visit. So we are already on the right track. So that's really good to see. Um, to ensure that all classes at all levels use higher order thinking activities on a daily basis, we always can improve there. So that's one of the things we're working on. 
and to continue to develop strategies for the implementation and application of conceptual understandings the faculty have gained. So that sort of code for that we <laughs> high school teachers have an understanding of social emotional learning in a way that, you know, certainly when I started 24 years ago, that was not an expectation of a high school teacher. So, so that's one conceptual understanding. The other conceptual understanding is the brain-based culturally responsive teaching. The design of the lesson is also, um, you know, understood, not just the content area understanding that the physics teacher has or the calculus teacher has, but they also understand how to design the time they have with students to um, ignite the learning, to chunk the material to give them a chance to actively process and then review. So that's what they mean when they say um, implementation and application of conceptual understandings. So, you know, when, when I talked to Allison about this, I was able to, you know, talk about how this year through the professional development that you heard Amy present um, uh, back in the fall, um, we've, we're really focusing on teachers presenting those um, brain based lessons to their peers and getting feedback. That's what we mean by the implementation and application. So um, it's great to when we finally got the report that okay, these are the four things we're focused on. So okay, we we'll be able to keep doing that. We didn't have to do any um, course changes based right. on the report. It's nice to know we're on the right track. And, it, and, and from my point of view, it's all about deepening. You know, it's about deepening the work and getting cemented into the culture and everyday practice. Um, Particularly the piece, I mean, those the, those examples of, um, you know, I always thought when I was teaching that, that I left exhausted every day and the students sort of pranced out of school, right? If we need to make sure the students are doing more of the thinking, more of the doing, more of the, you know, um, organizing more, that's what I thought. And, and, and that's, that's really what it's speaking. And you're going to be exhausted now. Yeah, it's, 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 it's also younger, okay? Should, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Um, all right, so James is going to talk for a minute about the process and then next steps. Yeah, so um, then the next step in the in the the cycle is um, we it's, it's, this this shows sort of the overall you know the next step is like um, yeah uh, so um, as school community we. Um, you know, we the report praised how we did in each phase of the process, um, including um, you know doing uh, identifying our strengths, our areas of need, um, hosting the conference, developing the improvement plan, and then completing our own uh, report for feedback. And that then allowed NIASC to give us um, feedback on on the things we wanted them. To, to observe, right? how, are, how are we doing progressing in these areas? I, I did go on a visit a few years ago and the school had, before the collaborative conference hadn't really done a lot of the work yet. They were kind of waiting for Nias to come in and tell them where to, to go. So this first part was really about how by doing this work up front, but then the faculty just spent so much time in each area, right? The shop teachers, the English department, the physical education teachers. Um, you've seen generalities here, but it's all the detail that goes into the, the full staff. So then the report gives us a blueprint for how we can um, move forward to improve the quality of our programs. You saw the four um, recommendations. Those are the areas we're going to continue to work in. You already knew about them from a prior report, so we keep leaning in and deepening the work as Ben suggested. So then um, uh, I will be working with uh, Allison Geary again with NIASC to submit a first report of progress and planning. He did it verbally recently because uh, where you see a three year and six year report, for us it's going to be a two year and a five year report because we already are a year in. Right, because we were waiting for the report, but because we were already doing the work and in contact with, with, with Allison, that's that's really no problem for us. So then uh, two years from now, um, I will be doing a, uh, working with my instructional leadership team on a two-year report and then five years of doing a five-year report. Um, as we get uh, closer to that 10-year cycle again, um, after the six-year report, that's when we begin those steps that I outlined at the beginning, we begin them all over again after the six year report, which is really five years from now. That's the follow up. 
Any questions? Questions. Go ahead, Um, does press kudos, right, James? Thank you recognize and all the great work that's going on at the high school. Um, my question is, when so we got this presentation tonight, yeah. right? It makes us feel good, you know. Yeah. We know we want yeah. tonight. What are the teachers getting? Like, did they have they been informed? Like, is there a thank you? You know, we couldn't do this without you. Look what we're doing, you know, look at the recognition, look at every yeah. single one of the recognitions, you know, and look where we are already considering the recommendations they yeah. made. Like it's what what kind of conversation yeah. is going on? That's yes, we did it yet. We did that yesterday. Um we had our um, you know the faculty meeting. We had cookies, cookies and coffee yesterday um, for for the faculty and the and and the big uh, so, you know uh, presentation of those recommendations to folks. Um, so um, so they could get a look at them first, and then with with you all <laughs> following uh, right after that. Um, moving forward, um, I will be, you know, with working with the team and the ILT, um, highlight different aspects of them so we can digest a little bit. Yeah. Yesterday was really about the amount and the number and the we finally made it here, but we have other business because we're, we're, half, we're coming up to the semester mark and we got work to do. So, um, so we actually uh, have talked a lot about that um, as a team, <laughs> those are here about how we can continue to celebrate things and how we can get the word out as well um, through uh, social media. So we actually have a campaign re ready to go where we're highlighting some of those areas. Campaign might be a little generous, but I think it's a campaign. <laughs> We want to, we want to, we want to reiterate, you know, we first highlight this and you'll be seeing that mm -hmm. in days. And then on an ongoing basis, reiterate some of the strengths and show and show you know pictures of folks doing these things. Right. So it could be professional learning, it could be you know the students actively engaged, it could be you know support of you know right. but, but but we want to show pictures and, and that sort of thing and, and others um, that you know portray the good work is happening. And then and, and your, your this points along the way. And what was the feedback when they heard from the teachers? Any feedback like, from a high the level teachers. You know, Anything it was, um, just gay for us or I, it, it, it was, I think we worked so much on this that it was a bit of a, um, like a good feeling of recognition of what we think is good about Gloucester High School too, right? Like, yes, these are the areas that we know and are confident that continuing to work on these things, continuing to value these things will, um, will help us in those areas of recommendation that we continue to work on. So it was a good, it was a good feeling to be able to review them. Um, I know that because I, you know, I want to make sure that we, um, as Ben was talking about internally, as well as getting the word out, highlight some of exactly what that looks like. So for example, I was talking to Amy Cam today about what, what does it look like to, um, highlight and, and really thank some folks who are or our students recognize as um, the trusted adults in the building. And you know, what is the particular work of a trusted adult and, and sharing that, you know, celebrating some of the people who you know are those trusted adults and what do they do and sharing that with other people. You know, I have a lot of new staff, right? Well, COVID and you know, just turnover and things. So what does it look like to be a, a good trusted adult? So it's just one example of how to take something that doesn't have a face or a personality from a list that you just saw and how to bring that alive for, for people. Um, so that's an idea of like in, internally making it alive. Um, so, uh, so people can really see it and get recognized. Laura? Um, so a couple of things, but firstly, um, obviously kudos to the teachers and to Amy Cam. And I really wanted to mention, Samantha and I had a meeting with the ASK in 2021, I think probably was, when we were new to the committee. Oh. It must have been Allison at the time oh. who said yeah. to us then, James Cook is amazing. <laughs> and take care of him. Yes. Remember? Yep. He said to us, we were new school committee members. And we were, they were like, don't, like, make sure you take care of him because he is leading this school where it needs to go. So I just I just want you to know that because we had this experience and it was really quite um it was it was really quite impressive. And it, so 
Thank you for sharing that. I do yeah. keep trying to keep those things <laughs> out of the things because there's so much work behind the, you know, because what I see and I appreciate well, you saying it. Yeah. He saw it, is I guess what yeah. I'm saying. I appreciate you saying it because I kept saying, was that me asked that the like, so long ago? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, um, um, one question about, so I read the report. Um, and this is sort of a difficult question, but the one thing that he said under foundational element 2.2a, yeah. yeah. student learning, where they said does not meet standard. I want to understand that yep. a little bit. Um, no, that's a, a, a good a good thing. So so um I was just talking about one of the uh talking about this with one of the chairs, uh, David DePietro, one of our math teachers who, who goes out on a lot of visits. Um no school that we're aware of. Visit I've been on talking to Alex and, and no none of the visits Dave's been on and he goes to three or four every year have met that requirement oh, wow. because what the requirement is for is it's for a written curriculum in a standard format for every course in the school right and so what's always happening is we're adding courses we're evolving we've got new teachers come in and so uh, what we were able to do, though, as you saw in the report, <laughs> is move from having, you know, in our core areas, so that your math, your English, your, your social studies, and your core science classes, we we're able to move so we have the comprehensive curriculum in those areas, um, which we've you know, I've been here for 24 years. <laughs> we did another NIAS, right? Like I was here for the last decennial visit and uh, I chaired the curriculum uh, subcommittee back then. And we, we were working on it back then. So to get it to the point where uh, we had the core elements in, and now we're working on, it, oh, CBTE was done. Um, uh, yeah, world language was also complete. It was working on, uh, a few electives, right? Like things that are, um, uh, maybe there's one teacher who teaches four different classes. And so they have a scope and sequence, but where we're that one person is responsible for them bringing that into a, uh, what we call a, a UBD format, an understanding by design, backwards design format in a particular way. So, so that's a lot of work for that one person. It's not something that's easy to help with because it takes the expertise of the expert in that field. So that's the work we're continuing to do. And, and the, um, the report that I write, and Allison and I talked about this as well, uh, Allison, Gary and I, uh, it will give them the progress. So how do we continue to update what the work we've already done? Because curriculum's on ending, we revise things every single year. One of the things we'll be doing with the mid-year uh, assessments is, okay, what do we need to change in the curriculum? And also um, continuing to have a written curriculum in more and more of what we call the singleton classes, where we might have one section um, of that class. So hopefully we'll we'll get there by the, the three-year report in two years by the, you know, we'll actually meet that 2A standard. It's deceptive. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a little bit deceptive. Um, I, we we have made that case several times. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't you have it be for the core class? You know, couldn't you make that standard something that is reasonable for a high school uh, to to have the way the others are? Uh, but it's okay. We like things to shoot for, right? We like we like bold bold things. So there's one other thing I noticed in the report, um, which I just want to know your feedback on, which I thought was interesting. I don't know if you guys saw this. Recommendation for all staff and administration, including the school committee, um, to engage in culturally responsive bias reflection training, um, which I'm always I'm always for that in every way all the time. But um, just, you know, is that something that we take on? Or, you know, that's something that NIAS was encouraging. And I noticed it. So... Yeah, no, that's great. So we, you know, we've been able to work that into our, um, you know, to some of our federal development in social emotional learning, right? It's a key part of it. And we even name um, the uh, aspect of, you know, being a welcoming, including school with inclusion practices. And um, and I, I just set up uh, the two, two faculty members who help run the racial equity team. We or you know, planning our um, our semester meeting for what's PD going to look like in the second half of the year. Uh, we're also doing the, the bias reviews of our curriculum, 
is another place that shows up for us, right? Our taking that bias training and then using it to apply it to the curriculum documents. But uh, and we we did start. I think I, I presented or Amy Cam may have presented our um, the world of difference uh, partnering with ADL to uh, have um, student trainers in the the ADL as well as our racial equity team for our students. But inviting the whole you know, community into that work is really um, uh, a great thing to talk about. It'll be a great thing to talk about. I, I think. And Allison and Niask is really, this is one of their big changes too in um, the cycle that, that wasn't really mentioned or part of or had a standard, even when they did their 2020 review. It's been sort of a review of the 2020 approach has, has been a greater emphasis on equity and inclusion and um, anti bias work. Yeah, I, I would say, I, what I would add to that is, um, you know, high schools, you know, digging this and working on it, working on it for a number of years, you know, and your curriculum to instruction and sort of stuff, and, and some of the concrete practices as, as we've spoken about, you know, um, there's also uh, some basics in place in terms of just instruction, um, curriculum and sort of stuff, which while we haven't in place at the elementary, just starting at, at O'Malley, so, and, and you want to have some of those things in place before you then do some of this the work on you know, cultural bias, that sort of thing. So, um, this is hard to both at the same time. Okay. Um, but in terms of the school committee, you know, I think it's really important <coughs> for us to understand that as 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 uh, you know, community of, of educators. Um, and so, you know, if the school committee was interested in that, and wanted to, you know, I think that that's that is a strong signal. The community would be a strong signal strong you know position of leadership that us understanding you know how bias impacts um, our lives our education or our schools and sort of stuff um you know by by looking looking at that so again i'm not i'm not that's, that's your decision you know that's something to, to think you know think hard about but th that is a would be a strong positive signal of the importance of that work if a group of you know, community leaders uh, the school leaders have said you know, that's an important signal to the school community which is really um, what obviously about yeah. most. So, but yeah, so I think I think it's it's, it's appropriate to consider and for school can we think, think about it. Now, then maybe begin learning more. Well, what does that mean? Because you know, because that, that was that's an interesting a, yeah. thing to recommend in this yeah. kind of report. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a clear. Yeah. It's something that the master sort of school school committees is working on. Yeah. So the master yeah. school, school yeah. committees helping us understand but more. Um, maybe I'm doing some leadership work on that with Massachusetts school superintendents. Um, so yeah, so I think you know again, if it's something that the committee wants to learn more about as a as a way to to figure it out. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, <laughs> this looked like a lot of work. I'm my <laughs> What like the the things that I learned just like in the first year, like. The amount of work that goes on behind the scenes is 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 monumental. It seems like I'm amazed <laughs> that you guys, with the pandemic and all that stuff, have done so much. Um, my, I guess what I'm wondering about is um, how how does this help? Like, uh, say, like on a Google search, like um, what do you call it? Um, if how does it help our reputation get this accreditation? Um, like the reputation of our school, um, uh, realtor sites, things like that. Um, maybe even promoting it on a website. I noticed on on their um, um, their website, they you know we can put like our accreditation on our Gloucester High School webpage. You know things like that. What what does this do to further our reputation? Is I guess what I'm wondering. And, and how how prominent is this? And and you know I know it just do all schools aspire to get this accreditation or. Most in our area, most yeah. schools, uh, you know, um, as, as you, there are a few schools that don't participate, but most schools do yeah. in our area, um, you know, in New England. That's yes. one of them. Um, and, and in terms of, as I mentioned earlier, we it's, it's love talking about how to get the word out um, about the accreditation overall and about some of the particular accommodations. So I believe. There'll be a part on the website. Yeah. So so yeah. so yeah. Right. You'll we'll be doing social media posts, which link then to a new web page on on the on our website about this specifically, so folks can look at you know can read can read a uh, sort of introductory text about it and um, look at their accommodations quickly. 
we'll have a, a, a sort of infographic which folks can digest quickly. Um, uh, we're hoping for some newspaper coverage on it. Um, and then I think also just, you know, I think broadcasting on the website very clearly, you know, the ask accredited you know, high school makes a lot of sense. Um, that's one thing we had not thought about, so it's helpful. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think um, does help the reputation, does help the standing. Um, it's, uh, and I think particularly, um, you know, there are particular areas we're commending and highlighting some of those in concrete ways as James talked about. And some of the things that are commended here are difficult to quantify. MCAS, much easier to quantify. <laughs> um, some of the work on social emotional learning, you know, equity and inclusion, um, you know, some of the prof you know, professional development work. Those are things that are harder to put a number on, right? And they hard, therefore, to promote. So when you have a, a, a reputable organization of, of, of educators and professionals who, who spent uh, a good amount of time with us, saying these things about the school that's something we want to get out there because it's it, it, like i say it, it can get eclipsed by other other kinds of uh, information is this report the entire report public information yes okay. so this we, oh, we we there are things we need to do to make it available to the public yeah. um including through um so, uh, well, so i think we're literally sending out to all families tomorrow yeah over okay. secretly so I, I, no, literally, no, literally, literally, we're sending all that. I think we said we're secretly. No, 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 very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. so so no, no, we're literally sending out <laughs> the entire report. Is a question? Or is well, it no, we're sending a link to where they can then learn more about it. Okay, okay. So we summarize the content. It's a public report. report. Yes. 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 You'll have a colorful bullet point infographic. Infographic. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and then you'll also share with us. Yeah, they're quite, yeah. It's, 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 we have a lot of opinions about it. So that would be, no, the, 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 what you're talking about is what are they open and what are they going to read, right? Yeah, yeah. What so. What's actually going to take it? The bullet points that you guys create, yes. the infographic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the infographic that will, with some color. Do you need some Canva help? Yes, actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, um, uh, Yes, we're 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 taking in what you're saying and adjusting on the fly. Yeah. But no, but that that's what we're getting to everybody. Um, we're making it easy to follow through in the link and get some snippets of it. Um, and you know, and you know, you'll see an effort over the next few days. You know about this, and the will for food. An effort. Okay. Yeah, like there are graphics. It's colorful. I, 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 these I don't know. I have to talk too big because it's, 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 it's first steps. Okay. Subject. <laughs> Folks, it's light years ahead of what we did like last week oh, or, or two just, years ago. Okay. But no me asking the subject. I don't. I don't think it would be me. Okay, great. Just something people will understand. Yep. Yeah, I've learned a lot about Canva in, in this time. So I appreciate that it, learning about it because yeah. it, it helps with communication, right? You know, I'm, I will. I will also for high school commended for achievement. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm reacting to the, it will not be a call post snazzy email, okay? But it'll be something that people can absorb and click through on, okay? But it will not be colorful. Okay. So not there quite yet. We have a freaking infographic. We can give it a front and a What's that? Just pick a nice font. Okay, all right. It's got cool. font. What did no, you not think? for the email, for the infographic. Right. I know. Right. Just I know. That is just yeah, one thing. So, so for websites that say like rate schools, does it factor into like some ratings? That comes from my part of my question. That's what it is. Rate schools is about a few commenters. Yeah. It's about standardized yeah. tests. And yeah. It's about uh, right. It's about the, the wealth of your of your school district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've looked into those reports a lot. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to do to adjust it, the, the, the impact the metrics, you're welcome to. Right. I'm sure there's some algorithm people can do. Yeah. No, it, it's, uh, it's it's not there. It, it's not. but no. But this is all serious. It's your question: but How do we continue to work on making sure the perception of our schools matches the reality? Yeah, yeah. it's very important, and also the reality is used to improve. Yeah, with retention. Yeah. Like, so, so that, I, I, I don't, I don't think it, 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 it's an important point. Um, and and we have to keep on, you know, efforts of, just like this. You're talking about tonight, you know, making sure folks know about this good news. It's really good news. It really speaks, you know, more than just a number. <laughs> and this is what's hard to communicate. This is an established, well, um, uh, well uh, reputable organization that has learned a lot about our school 
and because they know about a lot about it, they can they're saying great things about it. You know, and, and that and that is a, a lot of value to us. It gets it's just not as easy to package, you know. So that's what we're getting better at, you know, and then we'll take a stab at it and get input out for efforts. Maybe like that. Um, so but but it, it, it's it's hugely important what you're asking yourself. It's hugely important. Well, thank you. Excellent yeah. report. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. Uh, move on with a few, just a few more things on, in terms of uh, the report on the educational. Um, so, budget development, just to give folks an update about um, where we are on the budget development, and we're about to enter. A sort of public phase in the budget planning and development. I just want to give all of you and thereby the public a um thank you, James. A um uh, sort of a, 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 a preview of what's coming. So um we will start with our BNF budget meetings, which all of you are invited to. Um the first one will be next uh next week on the 17th, then the 18th, uh five o'clock here. Um and um, those priority meetings, those budget priority meetings are when we come forward um, uh, school by school and the major departments to help you understand what our priorities are for the, for the upcoming school year. And you probably hear folks say a lot um, that there hasn't been much change from last year in terms of priorities, we're continuing on them um, because that's really true and, and actually really important and strategic. You'll also find out that um, You'll see them uh, very closely uh, tied to the plan for ongoing improvement, especially the schools' priorities. Okay, um, so the priorities that, that the departments, transportation, food service, IT talk about are the ones that are in their plans for ongoing improvement. You haven't seen those final versions yet, but you have seen the schools. Okay, so we're we're providing through these presentations, providing uh, you folks with a sort of basis for the priorities for the budget. Okay, because your our budgets always have to fund our priorities. Okay, prioritize our, our, our them. Okay. Um, and so, in terms of the principles, I sort of said this in some ways. Our principles um, for developing the budget for FY24 is one align with the GPS for your plan for ongoing improvement. And again, those four priorities are deep and student long engagement, strength instruction, and then also better connect general education, special education. So, those are working together as opposed to being siloed. Um, strength and social emotional learning, mental health support. And then strengthen specific in special education, strengthen our um, our coordinated services and our specialized instruction. So really, that that's sort of in the blocking tackling the more specific um, instruction around um, students with disabilities, but also the processes in terms of um, evaluating um, and identifying services for them. So that's the that's the major the four priorities of our three-year plan for ongoing improvement. Um, We've got to deal with the uh, current fiscal realities. And we're going to be talking to you about some um, disruptions that have happened um, uh, really coming out of the pandemic, but also in terms of current um, economic climate, specifically related to schools. And that's going to be learning more about the impacts on transportation services and also added tuition rates and a few others that are really making an impact to make this budget. Just um, sort of, you know, um, it, it's going to. Take some effort to work it through, but we'll get there. Um, and then um, building a budget based on the current program reality. So the current program reality is really two things that while they're you know part of the plan for ongoing improvement, we really have to um, address them sort of head on. That's the growing numbers of students with complex needs, um, such as education students, but um, ones that really have learning and social emotional needs and to a degree that we haven't seen before or haven't seen the numbers before. So, um, that's a uh, it's, that's a good yeah. um, And then the also reality is to continue to invest in O'Malley to make sure that instruction, school culture, uh, the performance really you know continues to um, uh, so you know so the foundations of the school really are strengthened and um, continue to move them like we've invested in the high school and. Um, uh, school. So those are those are things that are just uh, happen. So those are the, the principles. Any questions so far? And, and these are things that will be reiterated and reinforced as we go along. Um, when we start having question priority meetings next week, 
when a department or school comes in front of the BNF committee, um, they'll talk about the start of their area of strength, what are they doing well, what their priorities are for next school year. The work is already in progress on those priorities because those typically aren't things that are starting fresh for the most part. Um, and then what they tend to do next year to further, further strengthen those priorities. Okay. So sort of what's good now, what they're focusing on, progress already making in those areas, and then what you know has to happen next year because that's what we need to fund. Okay, that's what we need to, you know, and when I say fund, I don't mean you necessarily, I mean continue to invest in this so much more. Uh, and then fund the calendar. Um, so again, we're sort of, you know, we're at this, you know, entering this this second row here. Um, it's not the 12th, it's going to be like a way late 17, 18th of the one more meeting. Um, you'll see that these are the ones that on the 17th, the preschool, elementary school, special education, English learners will come to, to, uh, to, to present their priorities. The 18th is the GHSO mailing, and then also um, teaching and learning. Uh, and then we go into the, uh, then those are not numbers. I say, those aren't numbers presentations, priorities presentations, okay? The numbers presentations start on February 1st when um, Gary and I present to the BNF. And then after that, to the whole, whole school committee. Beginning of February, then we get into the block and tackling the budget book, public hearing budget, public hearing itself, um, submitting it to the um, to the mayor, voting to you know um, school committee voting to submit the budget to the mayor, and we enter the um, city the city's um, uh, part of the budget process, um, which includes public hearing, a city council review, um, a vote by the city council, and then that turns to us for a final vote. It should be June twenty eighth. But maybe earlier than that. Hopefully earlier than that. What is it? Well, it says June 28th here, but hopefully it's hopefully it's a leak. It's, it's usually BS on Wednesday. Right. Every year. Yeah. So, so that would be the 28th. Right. So that might be that. No. Yeah, I think I think it might be the 21st. But, oh, but so that's so, so yeah, it'll be the 21st. Oh, it's oh, we'll, we'll get that date out. And then, so when we do come to the BF <laughs> on the 1st of February, so getting the numbers here, and then the full committee on the 8th of February, we'll be presenting the draft budget total, significant changes from last year to this year. Um, and we'll talk, talk about some of the, the major pieces, including out of tuition, uh, special education circuit breaker, and then federal state grant adjustments. So that, that's when we get to the numbers, but that's a month, about a month, well, not three weeks away, I guess. That's it on the budget preview. Questions? Okay. Um, I got an oddball question um, about the uh, O'Malley, the rig. Um, how much of the budget is that? Like, is that like a self sustaining? Like, do we? Oh, that was, oh, that was, yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious about that. that. Okay. All right. All right. It used to be ours. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because that could be a big uh, issue depending on you know how to run a rink. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, so then, Beeman Playground. So, a uh, bunch of updates on this, including we'll need a, a vote on something that, that, that has uh, newly been brought to us, but I'll get to that in a moment. So, December 14th, what it looked like here, ground was kind of frozen, rocks were being moved, met, we hit some ledge shortly after that. Then, last Saturday, so we got through all this. Um, there were some uh, real hiccups in terms of the site and ledge and weather. And so just getting to this point um, took a fair bit of time. Uh, then things got really rolling. As you can see that Saturday, all the equipment was installed by that point. Um, and, but uh, the, then the, then the um, landscape had to be uh, shifted around or you know, installed, so to speak, on right there. You see, this is Tuesday, so that's yesterday. Um, you see uh, gravels put down over the, the, the dirt here, gravels, some more dirt, gravel, um, mesh, okay? That gets it to the, the correct surface level. And then today, uh, they added all the engineer wood fiber. That's what that looks like. Yep, and, um, and and it's done, except tomorrow they're tightening. After they install everything and they do all the all the um, round, what's, what's landscape? The, not only landscaping, the surface, okay? Um, 
then they have to tighten things up again. Okay, so you tighten things up again tomorrow. Okay, and once they tighten those, those things up again, then they'll be able to play tomorrow. But they've got to remove the, uh, the safety precaution tape. There's a little bit of false start, start false start this afternoon um, because the guys are working on this took down the safety tape and shouldn't have. They take me back up seven thirty eight tomorrow so they can do the sort of final check. Questions? Be available over the weekend. Okay. So, but what I didn't put on here was that, uh, but as I said earlier, uh, before the 4th of December break, the, the, uh, the ribbon cutting will be the 18th. I think it's 10 30 a.m. We'll get out, I'll get out of the little bit of slot. Okay. And I invited 10 30 on the 18th. I'm just curious if there are swings. Yeah, there are two sets of swings. Okay. One is complete, so that the older, I think you're just saying that the older set we kept up, but the new swings have been, have been put on it. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. I think I, I, they look like a piece of meat. Well, they will look, I mean, they look tall. Yeah, yeah. So, and then um, <laughs> uh, here, you can't really see it, but in the yeah. background here is the new set of swings. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. I they, think make it up. I think they're, I think they're installed. They should be installed at this point. I just haven't got yeah. eyes on them today. Um, these pictures are mine. This picture of my dad. Um, so then, another important piece. So, any questions about the, about the playground before we move on to another part of the, part of the playground? It's very exciting. Yeah, Just yeah. Two for two for exciting. Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, this is you know, you're, playground. You're, 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 I can go yeah. there, but it's just been a long time coming. Many people have worked on this, right. especially Amanda Silva, for a long time. So. Amanda Silva was a real uh, linchpin in this, real leadership. Holly Mayer, the other PTO head right now, have been great and really supportive and very involved in, in the design of it. Um, Joey Gioni, obviously, of course, um, the school committee in terms of uh, uh, allowing you know, funding for it. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a, I mean, two new playgrounds in, in one school year is. is in the winter. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen a whole lot, <laughs> you know. We made a choice on this one. We could have easily postponed this till the spring, and we took a made a sort of risky decision by having it. You know, they were saying sort of mid November, and it became December first, sort of thing, in terms of equipment because there was delay on equipment. But we did make that choice to push it um, earlier rather than wait until springtime. And while there's you know a three week delay or so plus the December break, um, I think it's worth it. I can't wait to get outside because in the final moments of this, the kids have, haven't been able to be outside. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Really exciting. So um, now then, um, a few weeks ago, um, Director of Veteran Services, Adam Kukuru, um, uh, who's just been great and does great work with the schools. I just, you know, just want to take a moment to say he's a great partner. Uh, the Veteran Affairs, our Veteran Services, you know, great folks. Um, they, he's always including. Our students, you know, one of the most recent example was the Veterans Day ceremony here at the high school. Anyway, we reached out and uh, it brought to my attention something I didn't know, honestly, was that we have a the Beeman um, playground has a memorial to Lieutenant Earl F. Rice, who's a World War II veteran. And the it just so happens that the um, the memorial, the playground is here, the memorial is here. Right by Ranch of Cherry Street. And it's a great looking memorial, you know, a yeah. stone wall, a rock with a nice plaque on it. Um, and, but it's just nowhere near, and, and, and it was installed a long time ago. Let me give you some of the details here. Um, it, was, it was installed in the 1950s, really, I think before that school was built. Okay. I mean, maybe it was, was a rebuilt, I think. So it's not quite in the right place. And he approached myself and also the mayor with, um, is there, now what we're doing playground, is there a chance to move it so it's you know, closer to the playground, so it's, it's, it's memorial, memorializing, okay, um, in, in his honor. So just a few things about Earl Rice. Um, so the playground has been honoring him for many years, although we'll sort of folks sort of lost track of it because the memorial's far away. He was a first lieutenant in the US Army Air Force. Uh, he's the son of Earl Rice, and Avis A. Thompson Rice, um, graduate of Gloucester High School in 1938. Like many um, 
Ben at that time, he enlisted in the uh, armed forces just after, shortly after graduation in 1939. Um, like a lot of men as well, he you know, sort of went into service and then got married as he was you know, shipping off um, to uh, overseas. Uh, he flew B-24 Liberators um, in the Pacific Theater and then died during service on Lake Island in September, on, on September 1944. Um, you have in your packet when um, the playground was named in his honor. Um, and what uh, I'm supporting and, and Adam Kupu uh, approached us about was uh, replacing that memorial close to the playground so it'd be more at a more prominent place uh, for students and families to know <laughs> about him, about his story, and who the playground is named for. Um, we haven't decided where yet. Wanted to. Uh, talking with um, the mayor and Adam, uh, figured that getting the committee to have a vote on supporting that move would be a, a great first step, and then allowing us to figure out um, the block attack with the DPW and veterans services. You know where is the best spot. Basically, I wanted to bring that to you. Is it back where it is? Oh yes. Great support. So playgrounds here. I mean, that's the old playground. So it looks like it was. It's on the road, so that you can see it from the road to know the playground is there, as opposed to being in the playground. Like at Veterans School, the rock is up at the top on the road where you walk by. Right. The playground's down in yeah. the corner. So that was probably their intention at that time. I'm not saying that's the right intention. Right. I, I think. I think that's very possible. Yeah. And, and 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 I don't I mean. And as we know, the school was built after that. So um, anyway, so. So can I? So if, would the plan be to move that memorial or to create a different? No, move that memorial. Which which is a, a couple of things. So uh, I believe when we uh, West Parish we rededicated the West Parish playground for um, for that for the uh, I can't remember the name of the person recognizes that was moved once when the building was rebuilt. Okay, um, it was decided not to move the tomatoes one, um, leave it where it is, and that was working with some folks in the community to make that decision. And then, um, so, and then uh, just recently, I moved the veteran, being on being Veterans Memorial from outside the high school over to Sage Fort Park. So, moving memorials is not an uncommon thing, um, but it would be to, to keep the same rock and plaque, um, whether or not it has this sort of design with, with a wall. I guess it, it, I think that's TPD. Um, it, it not went that far, though. But, the, 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 but certainly to keep this. That was what Adam and Mr. Cooper were saying to us. And I know that there's there's probably no way to know this at this point, and this would be a DPW question, probably. But obviously, we're looking 10 years down the road at a new school. Um, and that, you know, we have no idea. I'm not presupposing that we do, but that's the biggest piece of land around, right? The Beeman spot. So um, I would just love for that to be brought into the conversation about where it goes so that we're not moving it again, right? That, you know, at some point, maybe somebody's going to be developing plans for a new building on that spot. Um, I think we keep moving it and keep celebrating them. Yeah, <laughs> I, do. I, I, don't think the public yeah attention. I don't think it's the end of the world if we yeah. move it for a third time right. uh, later on. Because so. okay. uh, we're talking about it, we never talked about it, right? Yeah. So it's, Brings to the attention I mean, to what else you're doing. In whenever this was the early 50s, whenever they put this there, it made sense. Nowadays, they, you know, whatever it's 50, 70 years later, it makes sense to move it close to the playground. When we build a new school, combined school perhaps, that would be in the site, right. move it another time, it makes sense. So, okay. but I think, I mean, most of us, I've only lived here my whole life. I never was aware. Mm -hmm. it's it's between between the so. playground and Right. I mean, yeah, I wasn't either, and I go there. Is it visible okay. from Cherry Street? Yeah, you walk right by it. It's visible there, but not from the school. Not from the school. Yeah, I think we just need to the woods. It would be cool to repurpose that little area. That's cute. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 inside. Thank you. You have one? You want to do one? You can do one. I just want to go once in one. Once in one. Uh, I think we have a motion. So you want a motion to approve the movement of the Earl F. Rice Jr. 
Memorial at Beeman Memorial Elementary School. Right, so, so moved. Second. Okay, so this is um, an approval to move it based upon what the Veterans Affairs and the schools decide is the appropriate spot, which we know will be closer in front of the playground. And then we'll, we'll go back here as we're figuring it out, and then that may include, you know, here or here type of thing. I know if we have some options like that. Yeah, we'll keep you guys informed. And will the students be involved with like the re-memorialization of that? I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Um, but that's a good it's a great idea. Yeah. I don't know if something was done with with West Parish, but even if it wasn't. I, I think there was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? Okay, roll call vote right, please. Mr. Minio. Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. Mayor Perkin. Yes. Ms. Watson. Yes. Ms. Wiesen. Yes. Jefferson Clancy. Yes. Mr. Marvel. Yes. Let's go Harry's. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks, Thanks to Adam. Okay, we have one more grant to approve um, <laughs> from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, number 209, improving ventilation and air quality grant in the amount of $438,000 and 48 Two hundred dollars um, for the O'Malley Beeman and Plum Cove schools. I so Okay. Tell us about what that means. Tell us what that means. Yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory, but well, it's um, a grant from Desi uh, for improving ventilation and air quality, um, and we put it together to focus specifically on um, HVAC RUT RTUs. To supply fresh air in classrooms in two elementary schools, even in Cove, and also to uh, provide additional fresh air to the kitchen in the neighborhood. Has there been discussions with the DPW that that's what we want to do? Yes, my okay. Kale was part of it. My Kale works with Gary Fresh to make that what we're not telling the DPW about it. My Kale prep. Okay. So it's prior. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, as soon as we heard this one was available, I'm next time with my Kale. Okay. Yes. And he said, do this. Is that okay? And when yes. would this be? Um, so as once the grant money comes in, they can start putting things that work out for bid and things like that. I would presume. Yeah, probably this summer. That would make sense. Yeah. But that would be up to the This this actually is part of this is tied to the modulars. So, so the, so the modulars oh, the work that, that wasn't completed last yeah. year was the rooftop units. Yeah. So right. this is a, a way of, of doing that. RTU. Yeah. RTU. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the, uh, the timeline of this was, was, was short. And while it was the first round, it can't be guaranteed the second round. So Mike thought it was best to go over things that were already, you know, very much in the pipeline. And that's what they did. So that's what it's resolved. Right. So, so we, 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 we went with, there was grand plans and said it. It's one. It's fine. That's the way it's supposed to work. Is there going to be a, a surplus balance? I mean, is this the sum total as budgeted? And how did this kind of come well, about? Okay. Another piece is, is is when I first heard the mic, goes, you know, that doesn't go very far, right? You know that. I was right? wondering. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> but no, there's no, there's no, it's, it's, it eats it all up. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, as far as like maintaining like, in the future, go, yeah. Yeah, no. no. It's, it's, not deep. Yeah. For the one group job, we'll get that. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so it's an allocation <laughs> really of Desi, and we don't write it down. It's almost half a million dollars. <laughs> and um, we reached out to Mike Hale to see what do we prioritize that would fix this budget. And um, this is what he came up with for to help out um, three schools. Right. Pretty good. Great. Roll call vote, Grant, please. Mr. Minion. Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. May have heard of. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Watson. Yes. Ms. Reeson. Yes. Jefferson Clancy. Yes. Mr. Melvin. Yes. The next item on the agenda is an update on the East Veterans Elementary School. Right. So. <laughs> oh, 
my screen sharing is paused. You know, that, that means something. Um, no. My screen sharing is paused. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So a couple updates. So some uh, some big movement um, in terms of things that are happening in these veterans. Um, so first of all, uh, December 15th, so just after our, the day after our last school committee meeting, we had our um, entire project team met with the MSBA, uh, sort of the first official meeting with them. Uh, and um, and so they give some news. One, the in-person site, we'll have in-person site visits by MSBA to the project site every month going forward. Okay. Um, pro pay submissions of reimbursement. So, big piece here is obviously getting reimbursements from the MSBA, um, and uh, that's so that's that's now happening. And the submissions go through a system called Pro Pay. Um, we are starting with all the the city does this work in terms of that, um, and the city's been great and um, with getting kicked off. And we're starting with WT Rich Invoices, that's the construction manager at risk. Um, those are large invoices, so we're submitting all those first um, to get them first as quick as possible. Um, and MSBA was clear on two things. One, clear in their commitment to getting us our reimbursements as quickly as possible, working with us, working with us to the extent that um, there are some new city staff who aren't up to speed on ProPay, and they offer to, to train our staff, or the C you know, department. Um, the John Dunn's office to help them know how to use it, so there'd be you know uh, just a good turnaround. And we knew we know what to do, or not we, we staff know how to, how to do that. And then Jennifer Connerton, who's sort of our product manager or sort of main contact, uh, so quote from her, I did not make this up, <laughs> but she uh, has, has a lot of just said because the product really that's been a little engine that could. We just keep plugging away, keep on plugging away, making progress, and they're really pleased with the progress. They're really pleased it's on, on schedule, on budget. Um, they haven't had too much contact with us you know, lately, but um, certainly been keeping an eye on things. And um, really appreciate the team and appreciate the work we've been doing. So that's, that was a great meeting and obviously much closer connection with them and partnership going forward. And then some important milestones we reached. So all the rooftop, speaking of rooftop units, all the rooftop units um, were arrived um, uh, just before December break. Um, which was a big deal in terms of uh, materials and lead times, and installation is all already underway. Um, we also uh, received a lot of the, the mill work and the case work, um, and that's being uh, installed now. Uh, they're completing the brick veneer, I think, perhaps this week or right now, um, and also completing the piping and electrical connections to the rooftop units. So the rooftops, are, you know, units arrived. Literally, you know, they arrive by being put on the roof. And then very quickly they're doing the electrical plumbing uh, related to that. And then ongoing work. So continuing sheetrock finishing and painting classrooms in uh, both building A and B, the curtain wall insulation, which is the very large window in the front of the building and in, in, inside the building. Um, and building B, elevator installation is happening. The acoustical grid, you know, ceilings are happening. I kind of like this stuff. Um, and then the classroom lighting, electrical systems, HVAC are all happening as well. So they're really, um, and this is a lot of interior work, you know, cabinetry, painting, um, you know, uh, installation of sheetrock, that sort of stuff. But it's real, it's not finished work by any means, but it's it's really making progress on the interior you now. It's great. I have a question. Okay. And it, I don't know, Mayor, maybe you might know the answer to this as well as superintendent, but um, so having worked at the courthouse for 30 years and, and being in charge of facilities, I've worked with the DPW on a daily basis with all the issues that. That happened in that building from the courthouse floor and i know it's always a guessing game as what's behind the walls you know like how are things installed and they're always looking for plans to try to figure it out so i guess my question is being being appreciative of their work and their attempts to try to fix, fix things has the city employees been brought into the building to see what is going on so that if there is an issue down the road, they know how things will build. In other words, you can see right. systems in place now. So people are the sheet rock goes. So, so, the so this, is, this is actually a great question. This is a great right. question. It's not actually, it's a great question. I don't know what it's called, but right. they, they are 
one of the videos they do is documenting everything from okay. once, um, once a month or every two weeks, I think. They literally do a video of the entire space. So whatever machine or camera is behind every wall so they can yeah. see what the piping is coming behind down the walls, and behind yeah. the wall exactly. so they know exactly where yeah. they are. And that is a complete record okay. of how it was built and what is where. So they'll have access to that. Yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's like it's really a really big difference, right? And it's so yeah. helpful. Right? Yeah, they're not looking at yeah. notes. They're looking yeah. at right. Yeah. Okay, so there's a video. They watch a video, and they're like, like Peter, uh, you know, diagrams. Yeah. I know when when oh, yeah. we had a, a, a new music yeah. venue built, we I was always looking through the as builds as they call them, right? Like, okay, right. this is modern. Like even a step further. Yeah, yeah so we have all those plus this this you know yeah. video record, and I think. Well, even calling it a video record is, is underplaying it in terms of how it's cataloged, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, how it's um, been brought up and utilized. Um, but they've been clear about this, you know, all the way through this, what they're out of documenting it. So, okay. yeah, but it's, it's it'll be a different version of, you know, at some point, folks have to go into this sort of thing, what's there, and know what's there behind the walls. Okay. Yep, no guess. Awesome. Well, like Joe Macedo has found a billing committee. So, for all the system things and yeah. everything, there's definitely the direct link. Yeah. So, anybody have any new business? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Mr. Minnie, Yes. Ms. Prince. Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Watson. Yes. Ms. Reeson. Yeah. Ms. Swenson. Yes. Ms. Yes. yes. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, who attended. Good night.